Good afternoon, students. Today we are going to start with menstrual cycle of class twelve human reproduction chapter. So, uh, menstrual cycle is a cycle for primates, for primate group of animals, which is generally for twenty eight day, generally. for 28 days and is not fixed varying from 22 to 32 days in this cycle in this the female body prepares itself for a possible pregnancy from the time of puberty from the time of puberty if pregnancy does not occur then the body Aborts all preparation done and restarts the preparation for pregnancy again in a monthly cyclic manner so broadly speaking menstrual cycle can be divided into three phases first one is bleeding phase or menstrual phase Number two, proliferative phase, proliferative phase, also called as pre ovulatory phase. There are different terms we can use for the same phases. So, pre ovulatory phase or follicular phase or follicular phase and also it is called as estrogenic phase sometimes estrogenic phase and the last phase is called as secretory phase or it is also termed as post ovulatory phase because it is happening after ovulation post ovulatory phase also called as luteal phase luteal phase and also progesteronic phase because progesterone level goes up in this phase so also called as progesteronic phase so ideally speaking, we can see that this is divided into three phases. One is a bleeding phase or menstrual phase, 
proliferative phase and number three secretory phase. So it is famous as either menstrual phase or proliferative phase or secretory phase. Now students, they can ask you questions with different names of phase. So you should know about all the different names of the phase. Now quickly look into what is the detailed understanding of this cycle. This is a 28 day cycle which starts from day one to 28 day approximately. So we can consider it to be a 28 day cycle. And when we look into this cycle, we can see that this, this, the first five days that is zero, one or zero, one to five day is called as the proliferative phase. Uh, which is, it's, it's under the proliferative phase. So basically it is not proliferative phase, but uh, this is the preparatory phase, which is called as the menstrual phase. Menstrual phase, followed by proliferative phase, which is from the next five to the 14 days. So let's say this is the 14 day. So this is called as the proliferative phase. And the last phase that is from 14th to the 28th day cycle is called as secretory phase. Secretory phase. Now this chart will explain you the complete, the complete menstrual cycle stages. So to start off, we can see that the beginning, uh, there is a graph which shows hormones. Which hormones it is showing? This is the part which shows different kind of pituitary gland hormone. Pituitary gland hormones. That is FSH and LH, which is coming from pituitary, which impacts this cycle. The next, we can see the growth of the ovarian follicle. So this part actually demonstrates the ovarian changes. And the last part, that is this part, demonstrates the uterine changes, uterine changes. And just above that, there is a demonstration of some more hormones, which is the uterine hormones. So these are the graph which shows uterine hormone changes. Now to understand this entire cycle, we should quickly understand what is actually happening inside the ovary. Now, with the starting of the cycle, under the impact of this hormone FSH, there is maturation of the small follicle which is found inside the ovary. So every month, one one follicle mature under the impact of follicle stimulating hormone and they keep on growing or maturing and the maturation somewhere becomes uh, complete on day 10. So we can see here that approximately up to day 10 it starts on increasing in size or growing in size making it a complete mature follicle now once this mature follicle is uh, is done this mature follicle from somewhere around eight to nine day starts secreting this very important hormone called as estrogen estrogen is an ovarian hormone okay which has been uh, released out okay and uh, this estrogen actually helps in development or production or addition of layers of the uterine wall. So estrogen helps in making up of the uterine all wall or addition of the uterine wall. Now, once this maturation is over, suddenly on the 12th to the 13th day, there is a sudden increase in the level of LH and LH level, this sudden increase or surge of LH results in rupture of the mature follicle. And this rupture results in release of the egg cell or the secondary oocyte present inside this 
particular ovarian follicle and this release of the secondary oocyte is called as ovulation so ovulation occurs on the 14th day on the 14th day of this entire cycle now the remnant of the cell forms corpus luteum and this corpus luteum again starts secreting estrogen progesterone and it also secretes one more hormone called as inhibin and thus this corpus luteum act as a temporary endocrine gland it acts as a temporary endocrine gland now once there is no fertilization this endocrine gland actually is of no use and as a star as a result it starts regenerating or degenerating and this regenerated or degenerated corpus luteum is called as corpus albicans which is a white color body and gradually it disappears now the function of estrogen in the beginning is actually formation of the uterine wall and progesterone which becomes high during the stages of uh, the later menstrual cycle actually helps in maintaining the uterine wall so estrogen starts formation of the uterine wall whereas progesterone maintains the uterine wall now if there is no fertilization then there is no requirement of the uterine wall and as a result it is secreted outside the uterine wall is shaded outside in the next cycle for preparation of a new uterus and that shading of the uterine wall in the next cycle or the beginning of the next cycle is what is called as menstrual phase so there are three stages depending on the changes of the uterus now if we look into the changes of the feet uh, the ovarian follicle then we can divide it into two parts that is the first part we can call it as the follicular phase first part is called as follicular phase that is starting from 0 to the 14th day is called as follicular phase whereas the next 14 day that is from 14 to the last is called as luteal phase where the corpus luteum will be there is called as luteal phase so there are two phases that is follicular and luteal phase depending upon the ovarian follicle whereas there are three stages depending upon the uterine changes basically the estrogen and progesterone are the ovarian hormone so we can write it as uh, more properly as ovarian hormone here which actually have its function over the uterine changes so uh, if we look into the graph or the changes that is occurring during this point of time due to the impact of different hormone we can see that during the initial phase that is we can see that the fsh starts releasing and its level again comes down little during the 10th or the uh, 11th day and again it rises up during the 14th day and again it goes down so the red color graph is basically the graph of the fsh now if we look into the lh graph we can see that lh again reaches it, it starts its secretion uh, it goes high from this 8th day and it reaches a peak due to which there is ovulation on the 14th day and it comes down looking into the ovarian hormone we can see that estrogen level starts increasing from the 7 to 8th day and it reaches a little higher level on to this 11th and the 12th day then it comes down 
and again it reaches little high from uh, during the 23rd or 25th day and then comes down whereas progesterone level only and only starts increasing after ovulation that is once the corpus luteum is formed and it reaches its peak on the 19th day and then if there is no fertilization its level also come down now students this particular graph of this different hormone say it as pituitary gland hormone or if you are th thinking about the ovarian hormone is extremely important and they can ask you many time question by giving only this graph so now with this we are winding up with today's topic of menstrual cycle and we'll continue in our next week